Welcome students. In today's session, we will learn writing the algorithms and drawing the flowcharts for few more examples. So I have taken a very simple examples so that we can get acquainted with the writing the steps for algorithms as well as drawing the flowcharts. So let us go through the first example. Write an algorithm and draw flowchart to calculate simple interest. Right? We know the formula for simple interest. Simple interest can be calculated if we have the three values. The first one is the amount that we denote it as a price. Okay. Second is the duration that is the time. And the third is rate of interest that is R. If we have P, T and R, then we can easily calculate the simple interest using the formula. Simple interest is equals to P into T into R divided by 100. Right. Okay. Now let us go and write the algorithm for the simple interest. As we know, the first step is the start. So step one is start. Second step, usually we denote it for the input operations. So input means here, what are the things we require in order to calculate the simple interest? So as we just discussed, we need the P, T and R. So step two will be input P, T and R. So P denotes the price. T denotes the time and the R denotes the rate of interest. So all the inputs we have taken care here, we have uh, taken the inputs and the next step is that we need to calculate the simple interest. So the formula goes in the step number three. So step number three, yeah, that is SI. So here SI denotes simple interest is equals to within the brackets, we can have P into T into R and then 100. Okay. So this is the formula for calculating the simple interest. So once the calculation is done, then uh, we have done all the things required for the solving this particular problem. And next step is to just output the calculated simple interest. So that is display the uh, calculated SI to the on the screen. Right. So step number four will be output SI. So here again, you notice that the S and I what we are using here. So in the Third number, step number three, we have denoted it using SI in the lower case, the same SI we are using in the output. As we discussed in our previous examples, the names what we use, okay, we call them as an identifier or a variable. We will learn those things in the upcoming classes. So the names, whatever we have used, the same notation, whether it is the upper case or a lower case, in the same way we have to use it for the uh, upcoming statements, wherever we make use of those particular uh, variables or the identifiers. Then the step number five, that is the last step will be stop. So if you go through all these steps, what we have done is that from the start step number one, that is start up to the step number five stop, we have gathered the input right in the step number two. Then in the step number three, we have processed it. That is we have calculated the simple interest and the third step number four, we have output. That is we have produced the output on the uh, from the this particular uh, solution. So the problems were written, the problem was available and we have written the uh, solution in a step wise. So step by step solution is written so we can call it as an algorithm. Then we need to convert this algorithm into a flow chart. <laughs> As we have studied that uh, flow chart is nothing but it is a, a pictorial representation of the algorithm. So for each of the step we have, we need to convert into a diagrammatic representation or using the symbols. Each of the steps or each of the operations have a certain predefined uh, symbols. As we know for the start, we have an oval. Within the oval, we can write a start. It indicates that we are beginning. This is the entry point to solve the given problem. Then for step number two, step number two says that it is an input. So for input operation, there is a predefined symbol and that symbol we call it as an parallelogram. So in the next step, we will write the parallelogram. We will draw the parallelogram and within that we will write the text input PTR. Again, you may notice here that the names for the price time and rate of interest should be same as what we have used in the algorithms. You may notice here that PTR small letter, the same PTR which we had used in the algorithm, the same way we have used even in the flow chart. The next step is what once we taken the input, we need to process it. So for the processing, we need to make use of the shape 
rectangle and within the rectangle we can write the formulas so for formula here for simple interest si is equals to p into t into r divided by 100 so once this simple interest is calculated next step is what we need to output it right for the outputting again the uh, shape goes the parallelogram so within that parallelogram we need to write output si and the last step is the stop within the oval shape if you notice here each of the steps written in the algorithm the corresponding steps are converted into a diagrams di 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 diagrammatic representations right like for the start in the step number one the corresponding flowchart is there like that for each of the steps right which are written in the algorithms are converted into the symbols of the flowchart Right. I hope this particular example is understood students. Let us take the another example and try to uh, read the algorithm and uh, draw the flowchart. So in the second example, the problem is converting the minutes to seconds. So we need to write an algorithm and the draw flowchart to convert the time from minutes to seconds. So minutes to seconds in the sense, we know that each minute Okay, every minute has 60 seconds. Suppose if the input is 2, then seconds will be obviously 2 into 60, that is 120 seconds. If input is 10, that is 10 minutes, then equivalent of 10 minutes in seconds is what? 10 into 60, that is 600 seconds. So we need to write the algorithm for solving this particular problem. So in the algorithm, first step, you might be knowing now that first step is for the start and second step is for gathering the inputs. So input is here what? It is the number of minutes. So that step number two, we write it as input min. That min indicates here the number of minutes that user enters as the input and this minute has to be converted into number of seconds. Right. So the step number three would be the calculation part here. So the step number three is equals to that is seconds is equals to minutes into 60. So this is going to be the calculation part. So if the minutes is 10, then in the seconds it will be 10 into 6. That is 600 will get into the seconds value. So step number four would be what here? It would be just showing the output. So the step number four output the seconds which we have calculated in the step number three in the step number three the whatever seconds we have calculated that we need to output in the step number four and step number five is stop very simple example input take the input as minutes calculate the seconds using the formula second is equals to minutes into 60 and then display or output that particular seconds and stop it now the same step all these steps we need to convert into a diagrammatic representation. So in the diagrammatic representation, you might be knowing now what are the things we require here, what are the shapes we require. For stop, step number one, that is start is oval and stop is again a oval. Input and output will be a parallelogram and calculation part will be a rectangle. Very simple task now, right? First draw the oval and write within that oval start. Then second, step will be input within the parallelogram draw a parallelogram and then write the input min that is min indicates here number of minutes and connect these two shapes using the down arrow right this is very important showing the arrows are very important that shows the connectivity or the flow of the data from one shape to the another shape then third step we need to write here for uh, we need to draw the next shape for the step number three that is calculation part so calculation are represented using the rectangles so draw a rectangle and within the rectangle write the formula that is seconds is equals to minutes into 60 and again draw the arrow mark from input to the calculation part that is from the parallelogram to the cal uh, rectangle then for the next step number four, that is the output. So the output has to be denoted within a parallelogram. So draw a parallelogram and then mention output sec. So this particular seconds indicates the one which we have calculated in the previous step. 
and the last step is for the stop and again that stop is drawn with the same shape with the help of the oval shape and within that right stop so each of these symbols if you notice here carefully each of the steps in the algorithm are just converted into a pictures here for the step number one start we have a oval then input is within the parallelogram calculation part are taken care in the rectangle then again output within the parallelogram and the stop is in the oval so each of the steps which are part of algorithm are exactly replicated okay into a diagrammatic representation as the flow chart here let us try to go, uh, go through the one more example okay example number three write an algorithm and draw a flow chart to convert temperature from fahrenheit to celsius so the input for this particular problem is what is going to be a fahrenheit and our output will be celsius so as you know the temperature can be uh, represented in different units or a matrix right so there are three uh, different matrix among those three the two types are fahrenheit and celsius so we need to know the formula wherein if we have given the fahrenheit how to convert into a celsius if we know that particular formula then we can write an algorithm and even draw the flowchart for that so for your uh, reference i had given a formula here that is formula celsius is equals to f minus 32 so here f indicates the fahrenheit if we have given the temperature in fahrenheit and then using that particular fahrenheit and if we apply this particular formula f minus 32 multiplied by 5 divided by 9 okay then the whatever value we get that will be the temperature in the celsius okay now let us go and let us write the algorithm as you know again the step one is start step two is the taking the input so here input is the degree fahrenheit so many degree fahrenheit we are going to input so that step number two is going to be input f so here f indicates the fahrenheit degree okay this fahrenheit degree we are going to convert into a celsius degree right so the step number three will be the calculation part so calculation is what c is equals to f minus 3 into 5 divided by 9 so if you notice here there is a bracket right you will see a bracket here so first we need to calculate what f minus 32 okay once this calculation is done then with that value multiply by 5 and divide by 9 so this bracket indicates the first operation that has to be done in this particular calculation is f minus 32 right and once that is obtained then multiply that by 5 and then divide it by 9 so the result value what we get is in the form of degree celsius right so once the calculation is done then the step number four would be obviously the output so output will be c in this case which has been calculated as part of the third step output c and the last step will be stop right it's very simple right start and stop as the first and last and second would be obviously input and last but one will be the output and in middle we will be having calculation part now drawing the flowchart will be very simple now each of these steps have to be converted into a diagrams with respect to predefined symbols right so the first step is for the oval that is start then second step is for the input so input within the parallelogram we need to write f then connect those two shapes using an arrow mark third step is for what the uh, calculation part so this calculation part is done within a rectangle so draw a rectangle within that rectangle right c is equals to f minus 32 put a bracket for that one then multiply 5 and divide by 9 so step number 3 is taken care within a rectangle which depicts the processing or the calculation and the next step is definitely going to be for the output so output has to be again written or drawn a parallelogram and within that write the output c and the last shape is for stop right so again each steps are represented in the diagrams 
or using the predefined shapes and each shapes are connected with an arrow mark i hope this example is understood students if there are any doubts you may put in your comments in the youtube okay thanks for watching students